Hello, 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 and welcome to another demo. Today we're going to paint this one. Another bird. I think they're very easy. You can copy. You can follow along. And most of all, you can be happy with your watercolor painting. So I think that I have the right angle. Unfortunately, I won't be able to see you guys because I'm over here and my phone is on that side. But if you have any questions or comment, you can definitely DM me on my Twitter account. It will be Mary Cruz, exactly like I have it here. You can DM me for any details. So this is, um, I'm using hot press. You can use cold press, doesn't matter. Um, will it be a little, a little different? Yes, it will probably be slightly different because this paper is a little smoother. Does it make it a better painting? Not really. This is more about, I feel like this paper is more used for illustrations and things that doesn't require much water. Um, however, I feel like the way I paint, you can paint the same way in cold press. Okay, so this is the paper that I'm using. This is Fabriano Artistico. I really love this paper and I use it in both hot press and cold press. I actually meant to get cold press when I went to the store and I got myself my hot press and I said, well, you're going to be used for whatever. So we're using it today. This is a regular old painter's tape that you can get in Home Depot or any hardware store. And I believe craft stores use it too. So what I do is that I like to tape in the corners just so the paper kind of just stays in the same way. Um, there's a lot of people that are a little bit afraid because of the sizing, because of the buckling. But I say do not be afraid of that. The paper goes back to its sizing later on and if you are afraid of this you really can't control the watercolor you can do your techniques over i'll suggest you to then stretch your paper which is actually very easy and you can also stretch your paper after you're done with your painting and all you got to do is you turn the paper over and just apply some water perhaps with a blow dryer just uh uh, run it through and the buckling should be good or you should be good with the buckling okay so here is the picture that we're going to do this is in pixabay so you can definitely check it out this is the picture all right i like to show the picture okay and also that gives you an opportunity to yeah, Pixabay, exactly. You can use it from Pixabay. You can use the same picture that I have here. And you can create your bird however you want it. Um, I have here, you know what I did? A chunky salsa from Tostitos. And I'm basically reusing it. You don't need... Sometimes we get caught up with, oh, I need better color materials. I need to do this. Um... With better watercolors, I say whatever you got, just use it. Don't get too accustomed to use uh, expensive stuff. I had long, 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 long time painting. So that means that I have accumulated over years many, 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 many art supplies because I do it almost daily. So over the years, I have accumulated a lot of things, a lot of different materials. I even have scrolls of paper still available, cold pressed in different kinds. But I don't know if you're the same way. I like to keep up with what's new. So I'm always buying paper, at least a paper. Brushes and paint, I've been using it for years. They usually get dry and there's a way of waking that up too. But that could be for another segment or another broadcast, okay? So here is our picture, and we're going to I have to accommodate myself. So 
hold on a second, right? I'm gonna try my best to also, uh, to also give you guys an opportunity to follow along because I'm going to be showing you the picture, okay, while I do it. I'm always banging this. I'm so clumsy. I wish I was less clumsier, you know? Okay, oops. All right. So we're going to do the head. All right. This is the head right here. I'm marking the eye. And I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it pretty big so you have a chance to really see what I'm doing. Because usually I do them kind of small. And I say how people can how people can see that. You hardly can see it on the camera. So today we're gonna do pretty big size bird. And for the for the um for the body here, what I'm doing is almost like a pear shape. Okay, I'm gonna show you almost like a pear shape. I'm gonna try to be a little more aggressive with my lines so you guys can see a little bit more on the camera how I'm doing this. So I have like a upside down pair. Okay, so that's the body. All right, there's some feathers, but we're not entering into detail. Just form for now, okay? Can you see? Let's just take a little closer. There you go. Much better, right? Much better? Yeah. All right. Most important thing is that the bird actually fits into the camera, right? Or, I'm sorry, into the paper. So that's what I'm trying to do. And there's a bird that is coming out here. All right. There's the side of the tail. And I have enough space here so I could lift this up, but we already have our, remember that we have a space over, around here, so it really doesn't bother me. And we're going to do the bird's legs. And usually we're going to focus on, just for now, we're just going to focus on how to paint it instead of giving you like details and stuff and we're going to also make sure that we have the eye because i like the eyes always bring me happiness when i do a good eye and i leave some space and i'm going to explain to you how i tackle that and you notice that i basically kind of just did my bird with some shapes not feathers, no nothing you don't see here. No absolute, no detail, right? So it's basically like a, almost like a, you've seen those pieces of, and you're doing like landscapes and you're putting it all together. So almost like that. So each piece that can fit into the color, right? No details, no feathering, no nothing. Just doing the shape. And again, separating the chest right here. Okay, separating that chest, which is like a yellow, yellow ochre with a bunch of other colors in there. We're gonna go into that later on. Okay, so basically just separated all of that. There's probably some al some alter um mix this in here in the birds let me just try to over here a little bit of orangey okay and that crest is like grayish and over here we have some yellow ochre with whatever it is that you want to mix it in because each of us have a way of interpreting what we see and that's the great i think that's the best way of explaining things that's why you see People doing pairs in different colors, different shapes. Um, it's still a pair, but you might see different different alterations of the same color, but in different 
interpretations. That's the way you express with your painting, right? So that's what we're going to try to do. So what I'm trying to say is that perhaps my apple or my orange or my bird might be a little bit more bright yellow and your bird, you see orange. So you will put more orange in it. Um, so do not limit yourself to just do as you see, even though I love when people just want the exact color um, because they want to do it exactly and they really want to learn. Um, but I always say, do as you what you feel. Like you feel that's an orange color, go ahead and do your orange color. Don't just put down some yellow in there um, because I'm doing it that way. All right, that, that gives you that um, individuality, express, expressive individuality that each of us have. And that's the reason why I feel that each of us have an important face in this world of ours, in this world of art that we can actually share with you guys. Because if you see one artist doing the same exact thing, how boring is that, right? Because you just doing the same, the same thing. It's very similar than the other, blah, blah, blah. So that's the reason why you see many people. I, I think there's thousands and thousands of people online doing birds and you always see them with different colors. You know, if you see the bird blue, you can paint it blue. Okay. Some say, someone said, I can't see your name, but what brings you joy? Oh my dear, plenty of things. But this is one of one of them, okay? This is definitely one of them. All right, so I feel in my own humble experience that the best way of actually tackling watercolor, specifically if you're a beginner, is by layering, okay? That's the easiest way. I You can do a direct painting and just right away you will be able to be done with it but i feel that for someone that is starting off in watercolors layering is the best way to go and however layering because it's layering you know one layer two layers three layers etc then it takes you a bit more time okay i'm drawing a bird i'm glad that i can see you all right so if i miss a comment i truly apologize but now i'm just looking down so I always say, let me wake up this color, okay? I don't know if you can see. I don't know what you said over there. Hold on. Trying to keep up with you guys. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me just block this person. And there you go. Okay. So I'm going to wake up that color that you see there, right on the corner. This is just yellow. This is from Holbein. Again, you choose whatever yellow you feel that can go in there. And you can definitely use this with colored pencils. You can do all kinds of mediums with it. And you, I feel like a lot of people say, oh, it's a big difference. It cannot be mixed. But if you want, you can do this in acrylics and you can also do it in oils. I try my best to do my techniques that are learnable, I feel, I think, not too difficult, so you can follow along, all right? So, we're going to do wet into wet, all right? And wet into wet, what means is that you're going to wet your paper, okay? We're gonna go around. Just make sure that it doesn't go on the eye, because I don't want the eye to be painted as of yet. And we're going to start first with the crest, or the head area okay not the head not the crest but right where the cheekies are side sideways of the birdie okay I'm gonna come here I already woke up my yellow and look at this cool trick we're going to go a little bit closer okay so you guys can see how this is done and we're going to Throw in the yellow. Okay. Now, I know of the amount of water. I feel like it is also very important. The amount of water that you can throw in to a watercolor paper, depending on its sizing. Remember that I'm using hot press. If you were to use a cold press, this will be more expandable. Like the watercolor will go around 
all over the place wherever you add water remember and a lot of people are afraid of watercolors because they say I cannot control it but you can by just applying water in specific areas and if you're not sure where you're adding the water tilt tilt it tilt your head over just a little bit you'll be able to see the surface of the paper where you wet it and like that you know oh okay so I wet it through here and you can open what we call we, you can open a little bit of a bridge to go a little further if you add more water water color will be running all over the place okay so wherever you control you wherever you go with that line of water watercolor is gonna go straight where you say so okay or the basically the watercolor is the paint right the water that you put in if you're doing wetting to wet it's gonna go straight where you want it to so if you do not if you're not if you're a little bit afraid of not making a mistake I will suggest you to just do one thing at a time exactly how I'm doing it here even though in this space here the bird has all his chest area, okay? All of that is yellow, okay? Now, I'm gonna wet my brush again, and then I'm gonna tell my watercolor, I want you a little bit down, exactly where I mark it, all right? I want you just a little bit down, and if I want, I can add enough water. Going back with my yellow color. I'm gonna play a little bit with this color. Okay. So that will be our first layer, right? And because I see that on the bird, on the cheeky area, he's a little bit more yellow. Let me just go upwards. Okay. And mark there. And you notice that I was very careful and miss the eye. Didn't do the eye, didn't cover the eye with my water. Okay. Now, you can do this two, two ways. You can definitely add some blue if you wanted to. You can do a mixer, a mixing of uh, bluish with a bit of black. I like to use black. A lot of people are big no-nos when it comes to black color. But like I said, because I do this, then that means that you're able to mix it the same way in acrylics and the same way with oils. Black is a flat color. I always say it. Black is a color that is just flat. If you add just black into your painting, it's just not, I don't know how to explain it. It just doesn't look great. And you want your painting to look the best that you can. But when you mix black with other colors, you add that really like a, a multi-layered color on top of each other, basically, right? So what we did is that, remember, we have to learn what we're using. What are colors are a pigment that is more diluted with water because of what is inside of it, right? You have the pigment is mixed with some gum, some, I don't know if they use honey or not, but back in the day they used to use that with different things that they're water soluble. Basically what you have is a grain, the mixture of paint, the mixture of of the of the color right which is like a powder form sometimes or usually it becomes a what what a powder form and you're mixing it with water so that means that when you're adding right so i have my colors in here so when you're adding water to this pigment here that has some type of gum in it some type of you know kind of like to glue it together so it, it becomes a little bit more harder to manage, right? What you see in here, for example, what you see here is that grain. Those grains are in there, 
you can't really see it because it's just like powder form, right? So that's watercolor right there, okay? And of course, oils are mixed with what? With oils. Acrylic, right? Same powder form with a plastic solution. So that's what you're managing. So if you know your materials, you know what you're using, you know exactly how they behave, right? Then you know how to, you'll be able to tackle it better. So I always tell people, um, get acquaintance with your materials, get acquaintance with your paper, get acquaintance with your brushes, get acquaintance with your watercolors, what you're using, make sure that you know what's opaque, what's transparent, what's not, transparent at all, et cetera, et cetera. What's inky, a little bit more inky. There's different brands that are a little bit more stronger. There's different brands that are a little bit more watery, which is a little bit more transparent. All of that, get acquaintance with your materials so you know how they're gonna behave when you put it down onto your paper. You have to know what you're using, first of all, okay? All right. A lot of people also ask me, what's better? What are colors that are professional kind or should I just keep using my raggedy old uh, <laughs> materials, right? And I always say just do in the beginning for practice. Just try and get yourself good quality student grade. And then practice, 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 of course, because practice makes you better, right? And then right after, then you can become a little bit better and then jump on to something else, which is more... The professional kind water colors. However, the professional kind water colors are expensive. So if you don't want to pay much, there's also student grade water colors who are actually pretty good and they can last you a long time. And one of them is actually, I used to call, I used to um, use them um, when I was starting off and they're called Jarka. Jarka water colors are Russian made and they're really, really bright and usually there's not much difference when it comes to student grade and professional grade just that the student grade the student uh, the student grade watercolors are a little bit more watery less pigmentation right as of the professional kind have more pigments in it so that's a big that's the difference but you can accomplish something like this with student grade as well if you don't want to spend if you don't want to spend too much money for practicing and if you're starting off in watercolors i would recommend you to start off with your student grade and then you graduate later on to a professional kind of watercolor because believe me um artist artist uh materials are expensive they're very expensive you know they're attainable but they're expensive okay so if you're starting off i think that's the answer to what i will give to any student that will start off so the mixture that i have here is Persian blue they also have this really distinct blue, also from Holbein. And I like to say which watercolors I'm using because perhaps you have a different brand and it will behave differently onto the paper. So it's good to explain what brand am I using? And this is the reason why it looks this way, you know? Alrighty. There's some brands that are liquid. There's some watercolors that are pen. Uh, on pans and there's the two watercolors which I love to use and I actually don't have a preference as long as the colors are bright and they can look good on the paper it really doesn't matter I don't have a preference when it comes to watercolor as well I don't want you to tell you that just use whole bind because I use them I use all kinds of watercolors and I've tried all kinds of brands so just go with what you feel comfortable with Okay, so now we're going to do this grayish mixture. This mixture here has some black in it. And then if you notice, I started my layer drying to wet. Okay, drying to wet, dry paper, wet brush. Okay, again, and this one also has some sepia in it. So it's a pretty cool um, grayish tone without sacrificing much. So there's some blues, some gray, which is the black, right, that we were using. And again, there is some sepia, all right? So here it is. Now, 
I started drying to wet. However, right? However, I want my phone to kind of just, okay, focus here. There you go. Thank you very much. Drying to wet. However, that means that this area, even though I started drying to wet, kind of just woke up because I added water in it. There's pigment in there and it's very, very wet. It's still wet. So that's a big of a difference. Some people like more direct way, drying to wet, etc., etc. I say do what you feel that is right for your paper, for your watercolor, and for your painting. What do you want to accomplish? Okay. But because this is a demo, we want to teach you every single way possible that you can tackle a painting. And like I said, you can definitely use this in your other mediums, which is oils or acrylics. Going now to the crest area, you see that I haven't moved further. Crest area, no details. You see, no details. Just painting over it. I think this is the best way to actually learn. Okay. All right. And then I was going to explain something here before I move on to another area. Is that you notice how when it touched the yellow area, that color turned into a different layer, right? It's because there's an under layer of yellow underneath, right? So that's also a very cool way of doing your watercolors. A lot of, a lot of artists use what we call a warmer tone underneath or a cool tone underneath. How do you know what way is the best way? Should I get a cool undertone underneath? Cool undertone meaning blue, reddish pinks, or should I just go with my warm tones? It depends on what do you want to create? What do you want to convey in your painting? Do you want your painting to have a warmer look? Or do you want your painting to have a cooler look? Now, which one looks better? It really doesn't matter. It's what you want to create. That's the part that I think that's the beauty of it. Now, some artists do use blue undertones because they're going to add a warmer undertone on top and then they're going to basically just do their layering in tones or layering in paintings. Can you do that with watercolor? Absolutely, yes. You can do that with watercolors. You can undertone your watercolors to your preference. You can undertone, this bird can, be, can have that yellow warmer tone that I always called for yellow ochre which is an undertone, it's earthy, more warmer. You can paint your entire bird in yellow ochre and then you can add the layers after and they will look very beautiful. But of course your bird is gonna have a warm undertone, right? It's gonna have a warmth to your painting. It's gonna add it. Can you use a blue undertone under your painting? You can definitely add what we called, I call it a tint. Now, a lot of people is like, what in the world is that? <coughs> what the heck is a tint? What is it used for? I tint my watercolors at the end of my color. At the end of my paintings, I tint sometimes my watercolors. Now, this is more, so it looks more professional, so it looks more finished. A tint is almost water. It's like basically 60% water in 5% uh, basically the medium. So more water than anything. It's almost like you can see the blue in it. That's my water color tint. And sometimes I use it depending on what I want to convey, depending on what I want to do. Some people say, no, you shouldn't. Um, watercolors are meant to just start with the white paper, blah, blah, blah. What are you doing? I work in both ways. Remember that I'm an artist that tackle, I tackle watercolors, I tackle uh, acrylics, and I tackle oil paint. So some of those techniques that I added from the other mediums, I use it in watercolors, absolutely. The same thing that I have learned with my watercolors, I add it to my oil paintings and I add it to my acrylic. The reason why I do that is because it's easier. Everything that allows me to make a faster painting and easier, I will do. 
but of course you have to be careful and we're not going to show tints and under layers at the moment but if you go to my broadcast you go back 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 to my broadcast you'll see that i have done still lights with that undertone that i'm talking about and i also have done other other um themes that have that tint or i just started off and i just wet the whole paper and when i'm wetting the paper i really don't explain that because i thought it wasn't important but in reality, yes, that water tint, that water splashing that I'm doing has a hint of blue in it. And it's sort of like the painting is cool. Usually I use that with my flower paintings. Flowers are uh, colorful. Usually they're bright pink. I want them colorful. I want them cool. And then again, I use my uh, green or lightish ochre to do the foliage because I want that warmer on the tone. That also has to do with the, top, the theme that I'm making and basically for botanicals, which is flowers and etc. It's that earth, right? Where it grows is earthy. It goes back and then becomes cooler because it's going straight upwards. And usually upwards, what you have is the sky, right? And all that stuff. So it involves a lot of stuff, a lot of tricks and nicks, but you know, let's just focus on this and let's just keep painting, all right? I don't want to confuse you. All right, so very cool. Now we have this side, this side, this side. Almost like a... I completely forgot how is it called. But you'll get my groove once you know what I'm doing. So... That tint that I use, I'm sorry, I can't show you, but the tint that I'm using, this is the blue. This is the two blues, okay, two blues. There's a tint here. I moved it to my sepia, right? Then I went and woke up my yellow, and I added here, okay? It's like a greenish tone all right okay you see it i'm pretty sure you see it there you go right there i've got earthy green all right all right and i use the internet for different things so we're going on this side so you know where i'm going on that side no details, okay? You don't see me adding no details, all right? And another thing is that I'm not afraid of adding color. Some people are very stingy. Don't be stingy with your watercolors. Add the color, okay? We're, even though we're layering, we're adding the color. We're not afraid, okay? Let me just paint the leg, all right? Same color, hint more of sepia, and I'm going in with the bird's body or feathering. Okay, <coughs> not adding one single speck of detail. Now, my my feathers or the bird's feathers feathers. I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. the bird's feathers change to again. That grayish blue undertone so I'm gonna come here walk, wake up my blues hit it here with a sepia and then I'm gonna add it here okay I'm gonna try my best not to go too fast too furious so you guys can see and one thing a lot of the, um, People, they'll get frustrated because not all layers are going to come out exactly with the same color. Don't worry about it. As long as you have already mixed your in, don't worry about it. Remember that that's what creativity is about, expressing, okay? So I'm just going to leave that area unpainted. And I'm going to go and add that blue tone 
into its eyes, okay? Then I'm going to go also and add it to the beak. All right, we're going to wait just a bit, a few minutes until it gets just a tad dry, even though we already know that this side is dry. Okay, the whole thing is dry. This side is dry. Okay, I can even touch it. All right, and if you're not sure, is it dry or not, just touch it. Feel it. Oh, yeah, it's dry. So I can add my second layer, okay? That's another thing that I feel like when you're beginning, it's frustrating because it's still wet. So what I'll suggest you to do is that you pick up your brush, right? And you start practicing how much water does my brush actually hold? That much, right? I have like an idea. I touch it, I feel it, I do everything. That's how much water the, the brush actually holds. So, I'm going to clean it because I'm adding my hands oils on it, even though I don't care. It's not like somebody's going to say, oh, he has hand, hand oil in it. My hands are clean, so I don't have to worry much about that. Okay? So, two, now. Remember that I was saying that I see some orange in it? To so my yellow, I'm adding a hint of red. Okay, so I'm going to go wherever I see that is a little bit more darker. I'm going to add my orange diluted wash. W-A-S-H. You know that I'm Spanish. And sometimes my lingo is no comprensivo, okay? I always say that my translator went to sleep. He's a Mexican translator and he is one o'clock. He's on lunch, lunch breaks. So sometimes I do get stuck and for that I do apologize, but usually my words are, <laughs> they come out okay. All right, we're now doing the body. Again, notice that no details, right? No details, I'm not finching about the details. And yes, it is a finch. It's a bird, it's a finch. Okay, so no finching here. I'm not obligating myself to do details as is of yet, right? Just gonna add just a bit more, just to change my bird a little bit, because I'm the one who's painting him. So I add a little bit more orange, just cause. Really doesn't have it. But I want him to be a little bit more orangey. Okay. All right. Are you able to follow? Good. All right. Now, going back to my blues again. It's almost like repetitive action, I think, which I love because it helps with your, it helps you to control your layers and it helps you to learn how to mix your colors. A lot of people ask me, how do you mix colors? All right, my dear. I'm going to tell you the easiest way that you can learn how to mix and match your colors is by using the color wheel. That simple. All right, you don't need you don't need to go and go to a color uh what's it called? class. You learn the color wheel. That color wheel, my friends, will stick to you. You study the color wheel and you will know how to mix your colors, okay? So that's what I do, okay? No details, all right? Just going in, basically just adding shadow, all right? So wherever I see shadow, no details. Wherever I see shadow, I'm adding a little bit more of a, more of a tint of the same color. Layering, 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 layering going to come here again all right and then now i'm going to bring my blue to where i see shadow okay and again i add another tint 
for another wash with definitely okay all right i'm gonna drag it all over okay that tint of blue okay there's nothing wrong with that and even i'm going to take some here and add it here okay that blue is adding a lot of shadow everywhere you go so i really didn't do much right he added too much color, which is basically just add that blue, the tint that I already had, and just added more shadow. I'm gonna come here, I'm going to separate where the feather is, all right, where the wing is, and add a little bit more of a darker color. Same here, we're gonna go and add more of a darker color and add it here. Everywhere where I see there's shadow, okay? I'm going to make it a little fluffier. Just give it a little bit more form. And then that's it, okay? It's like, oh, no more. Don't overdo it. If you tend to overdo your things, step back, okay? That's what they used to do. Who used to say that? Was it Gregory? I don't remember. Step back. You know what you're going to do? You're going to hint your eyes, squint your eyes, and you're going to really see what you're doing, right? Because if you are like me, desperate as I am, you will just go keep going, right? Because you want to finish it. But now we're going to let our eye decide if we're doing the right thing or not. So we're gonna step back. If you are afraid, we're gonna continue painting. Let go of your brush, okay? You're gonna step back and you're really going to squint your eyes and see what are you doing? Is it doing well? Is it looking great? Is it looking okay? Does it need a little bit more of a shadow? Did you did the form okay? Does it look like a bird? Yeah, it looks like a bird. All of those things. You squint your eyes, you step back. You can do the same thing when you're painting acrylics, and you can do the same thing when you're painting oils. Matter of fact, this is the rule for every single person that paints. Greater painters are greater squinters. Okay? I know it sounds a bit of like a joke, but the truth is that greater painters, the best painters are the best eye squinters because you're stepping back and you're really looking. When you squint your eyes, you can see exactly where the shadows are. It's almost like you're squinting your eyes as if you cannot see. But when you squint your eyes, it's just like you're covering that light. You're covering the light in your eyes and your eyes are able to see exactly where that shadow is exactly do you have the right color etc etc so better painters are great squinters my friend that's what makes a great great painter you have to step back look at what you're doing squint your eyes and see you're going to compare if it's a still life how is it going if it's a bird how's it going if it's a flower how's it going by just squinting. I know it sounds crazy, but it's the truth. Ask about just in case. Because a lot of people like, she crazy. I am. But I'm good crazy. Trying to help you here, okay? All right. Now, we have all our layers. Our birdie's happy. You notice that I did not cross this area. I did not went over it. Because in reality, if you come to this birdie here, and you squint your eyes, what do you see? That spot right there is untouched. And of course, there's some feathers in here, but they're not going to, they're really not bothering me at all, okay? But this area is important, so that's another thing. Watercolors, that's another thing that a lot of people are like, how can I see the light and the, the shadow? How can you learn to see that? Squinting, squint your eyes, my dear. Squint, 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 okay? Squint, step back, and you squint your eye. Every sculpture out there, you see them with the finger, with the viewfinder, squinting, squinting their eyes. Do I have the right uh, measurement here? 
did I went too far? Do I need this? This is how you calculate. This is why I always say that painters use both right and left because you're calculating everything. So don't underestimate, okay? It helps you with everything, all right? It's good therapy, but at the same time, it helps you calculate, helps you do things that perhaps will allow you to think better. I don't know. I always say the painters are smarter. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't like math, okay? Now, this, this, <laughs> hello, this, bird it, this is a whole a very horrible crappy crappy i'm sorry but it's a very crappy um picture however i do know for a fact because i can see it when i look at it that it has some grayish gray patches in here like this not gray patches i'm sorry these orange patches in here there's orange patches in here an orange patch here 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 there's orange everywhere in this bird but however the greatest part is on this side. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go with my trusty brush over here. All right. And then I'm going to do the same. It's just me. Remember, slash illustrating, slash slapping or slap sloppy. But I like to do my right, the right thing. So sometimes, sometimes I just paint like just for the heck of it. So we're just going to do that area there. Okay, I don't know if you were able to see, but we're going to slap that. <laughs> we're going to slap that color in there. Okay, I'm going to round up the head a little bit. All right. So that's what I'm going to do here. And then I'm going to clean my brush and then drag with me just that that I just did. Okay. So, all right, so you have almost everything here basically done. Now what's missing? The details. Cool, we're going now to the best part, right? That's the part that everybody wants to start, wants to start since the get-go. But some people forget that in every subject, you have to learn how to maneuver first. Form and light is very important, specifically in watercolor. So once you have form, light shadow all that good stuff then you're gonna go to the third phase i guess i don't know which is the details very cool okay so for details what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna let go of this brush all right so we're gonna use the right tools that's another thing that's something that also a lot of people um question uh <laughs> Because they see a lot of artists that do the whole painting with just one brush. I mean, come on, you can do that. But if you really want to nail this, you want to do the details with the right brush. So we're having here a detail brush. Really cool. Okay. Now, I'm going to get my trusty here. Because these brushes, you also have to wash. You have to watch. No, watch wash wash you have to also wash for little bubbles like little pockets of water so i'm gonna get my little thingy me dingy here so let me just squint back so you can squint you can look at the bird see how it's coming okay we're going to and i think that i should just instead of squinting or getting you out of the zooming i'm going to zoom in where you can see the detail of the eye, because I think it's freaking important, okay? I'm going to explain something too. Very cool, okay? There you go. Right on the eye. Okay, so remember since the gecko, we decided, or I decided, because I'm the one painting, I decided that I was going to pass on that hint of blue, right? I was going to pass on that hint of blue or that tint of blue in that eye. Why did I decide to do tint of blue in the eye? Just like in a human being, just like in a dog, just like in different animals, we have is an eye socket, right? Eye socket meaning is just hollow in there, right? If you were to watch and look at the skeleton of this bird, it's hollow in there, right? Obvious, right? So I decided 
as a personal choice, instead of adding yellow ochre, which you can do, I decided that I was going to do a blue. Why I did this is because it looks more realistic after you're done with the details, okay? So it looks more realistic. For birdies, try to get that hint tint of blue. Tint is almost like you can see it, right? You can see it. Very different to the rest of the body. Very, very different blue than the crest on this side. Very different than almost about the same as the beak, but the bluish tint that I have in there. Let me just tell my focus here. Okay. All right. Now, my birdie here is looking down. Where are you? There you go. Look how cute he's looking down, right? That you didn't notice because when I had the picture away, you didn't notice. But I'm really, really, really looking at that detail. So he's actually looking down. There's really no, there's, there's really there no space. There's really no highlight. But I do know that I want my bird alive. So I'm going to add a highlight. Okay. I'm going to get again that mixture of black with my blue. I'm going to make this really nice, cool, a hint of sepia. It's almost like if you were cooking. Just a hint of blue, hint of black, and then here we go. We're going to do the eye, okay? Again, focus here. There you go. Thank you very much, phone. All right? Okay, don't mind. Ooh, look at my nails. Nice. All right, so I'm going to make him alive. So I'm going to leave a highlight isn't this freaking cool okay so my original picture didn't have a highlight but I want my bird to look alive so I added a highlight and you can even if you see you can add two highlights it's, it looks very very cool that's only if you want to you don't have to but let's try there you go do you actually think that with a, with a bigger brush you won't be able to do this because obviously I'm doing this with a detail brush, right? So that's why the right tool for the right job. And now we're going to come here and we're going to look at the beak. Now, this bird's beak is a little shorter than what I actually took a picture or they're actually my picture. So we're going to try to make it a little shorter. Even though my birdie here has a longer beak i'm gonna try and make it a little bit shorter so we're just gonna do here or mimic it as if it was shorter even though we're not gonna change so again shadow here and a little thinner so we're gonna go here a little bit of shadow there okay so there is and we're going to start the bird's head from here okay so i'm just gonna grab kind of just unify that area there all right so detail 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 hint of red because that's the first um color that i added with the yellow and we're going to do the details okay so we're just gonna do here some detail going upwards very coolio around the eye usually i don't touch the eye much once it's done but it doesn't matter it's your preference if you want to do that okay and then we're going to close in the eye almost every bird has that area white almost every bird that you will see has an area especially parrots are very pronounced on the parrots but almost every bird, that area is white. Okay, so when I come here, so that's the second layer on the eye. Again, so you can focus. I'm going to get my black. Where are you? Right in there, right? Whatever was left from the last painting of black. Because I do use that color. And I'm going to add a bit of more black into it. And now my bird, I have a water pocket there. My bird is alive. Okay, my bird is looking. All right. 
Okay, so I hope that you were able to see how to do the birdie's eyes because that's very cool. All right, you don't have to do the same thing that I do, but why not? Looks better. Okay, now we're going to finish the beaky. Watch out with the pocket of water. Okay. And I'm going to come here and kind of just unify this over here. And by a pocket of water, I don't know where am I? What am I? What am I? Uh, uh, there you go. See the water pocket? It's like a water bubble. Bubble. Okay. So we gotta squeeze that out because that can cause big trouble. And then now I'm going to do details. I'm going to mimic feathers, all right? I'm going to do all kinds of cool stuff to make my bird looks more like a real bird than an actual just. So I'm just literally just adding the same color, not doing anything. Same mixture of colors, not going anywhere with different stuff. A little bit more shadow here so i'm just gonna raise this area can you see what i'm doing yeah okay and then now we're gonna go downwards just gonna there you go see I'm gonna go downwards And then now I kind of just do my little feathering here and there. And if I cannot do much of the feathers, because you also go how to go with the shadow of them, then with this brush, I'll get another, a bigger brush. But for now, this one is working. And I am using black, okay? That's the last detail, so I want those details to be pronounced. So I'm going in with my black. Or my black mixture, better say. Here I did one feather. And there I did another one. I'm also going to mimic feathering here. Okay. And over here, I don't go crazy with too many details, but I do like to add a bit of feathering. My feather friend here. On the bottom part, there's my water pocket. That is ruining ruin my area, but that's okay. Happy accidents, okay? Add a little bit more of that shadow. Fix just a bit. My beaky here. Okay. Alright, 
So you see what I'm doing? Over here. Over here. These are feathers where I feel like, okay, you know what? It can use a little help. Same mixture. I haven't changed anything. I'm going to the back of the bird or basically just the... Uh, um. These little feathers here. And I love when a watercolor looks like there's some meant to be in there. Meant to be um, white spaces. And then in here, I want to do mimic some. Not everything, but some of it. Just because I like my bird to have that. So one thing about when you're painting watercolors, oh, thank you, darling. When you're painting watercolors and when you're painting something, another thing that looks a little tacky is lines. So you have to be, you have to be careful when you're making lines. So what I usually do is right after i do my lines right my lines are here there's lines here you cannot miss them because they thank you darling thank you so much okay this is this broadcast is completely free the demo is free you can use the picture you can do your own this is for you guys to learn something and i usually come here uh, every so often and show you guys what you can do anyways so what i do is lines are tacky and some people do not like them so i don't like them because i can see them from afar i can put that painting all the way away from me in my wall and i'll see the lines right i do all kinds of stuff people i'm not great at let me see buildings i don't like paint buildings very rare I do a building okay so what I do is that I come with I, I get my brush right and you notice what I'm doing I'm just kind of just softening out softening out those lines so it doesn't look that tacky there are lines in there but they're not too on your face right over here there is some lines over here I can erase too much. I just add a bit of a layered color in there. So it doesn't look like, oh yeah, there's lines right there. Okay, so that's what I do. Kind of just disappear them at the same time. I know it's like, some people's like, yeah, but why didn't you do them in the first place? Well, there's, there's a really big difference when you put a bird that is feathery, right? You have to do the feathers, okay? Because it's a bird. All right. Okay, so basically something is missing. Tell you what is missing. This area right here. The reason why I didn't do it is because my birdie here actually has some white. Some white, you see it? Wait right over here. You see it? Right there. Okay. And I really don't want to do, I don't want to go and get my wash. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to separate those wings now. Okay, we're going to separate those wings, all right, by adding a nice wash. Even though my bird does have them, and it will look better if I do it the same way that I see. I decided not to. It's just not going to complicate my life. Neither do you. Okay, just going to add a hint, bit of blue. All right, okay, thus far. My bird looks happy. I'm just gonna do over here, just for the heck of it. That feather is over yet, okay? And over here. And now my bird is complete. If something you did, like something that 
you feel, oh, I went too much into, I went too much, you know? You can always grab your brush and pick up with your brush. Pick up that area very gently. Um, some of these colors, like for example, that bluish tone that I was adding to this paper is very, very uh, inky. You know, it's very tintable. It's, it's not going to come off. And again, I'm using a watercolor paper that is a hot press watercolor. So you're going to be able to see um, it's a little bit more harder to lift up paint. And if you don't know what lifting is, I'm going to sacrifice my bird to show you. Okay. This is an acrylic brush. It's a little stiffer. Okay. A little stiffy. Stiffier than my regular watercolors. Okay. Can you see it? Huh? You see stiffer? Okay. I'm going to wet it. Let me see. I'm going to, I'm going to lift where you can see let me see where mm. somewhere where i'm not gonna ruin my painting okay let's just lift just a bit there all right so i'm just taking i wet my brush right we're going to zoom in so you can learn all right there you go i'm sorry i can hear what well you're not in the, shame you're not in the queue shame you're not i love some things oh, I'll see. oh sweet no i'm not i'm in us but you can definitely learn what i'm doing you can really 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 appreciate it if you continue coming and watching my broadcast and replaying okay we're going to left okay so hopefully i don't like what all right so i don't know if you can see Right, so as I'm basically scrubbing the brush, the very, very wet, not too wet that you're gonna be dripping all over, but it's wet, is lifting up the paint. Okay, so if you made a boo boo, you can definitely do this. I'm very careful because I don't wanna damage what I just created, but that's the lifting. Can you see the lifting? Yes, you can. That is so very cool. Okay, so that's lifting. Just gonna come back here and add what i just lifted all right remember i do all these things because i have plenty of years of experience but when it comes to lifting you have to be very very careful okay you don't want to mess up your painting so just be very careful all right okay i think we are done my friends with the demo i hope that you guys like it i wanted something simple something easy something you can follow along I hope that I wasn't too technical because I do get like that, but I do want you guys to learn. Um, some people, uh, I mean, I love to watch other people doing what they're doing. I mean, I am an artist and I love art in general, but I do want this broadcast to be different. This broadcast that can actually not only benefit you, benefit me, benefit the work that we create the theme you know because i feel like yeah it is very cool to see this is what i can do but it's even cooler if i show you exactly how to do it don't you think so that's what we're doing here we're going to move on to the next however i liked my broadcast to be able to be i don't know if you can download them i have no idea but if you can't at least you know you have a very simple easy broadcast that you can watch doesn't take too long and you can actually follow along because i actually <laughs> took my time sometimes i'm pretty fast and people are like wait what what she did now wait when did you add that color you didn't say anything you know so i try my best to be as short and straight to the point as possible a lot of people don't like the watercolors when they do them and they leave the pencil marks i do not care for pencil marks, I actually like the handmade quality that the pencil marks create on the paper. But if you don't like, once it's dry, completely dry, can it have no bubbles, no buckles, no nothing. Once it's completely dry, then you can go ahead with a potty eraser, what we call a potty eraser. I don't have it with me, unfortunately. But um, you can just erase your pencil marks if it bothers you, you know. And if you just want to just have the, um, the 
painting but by itself without the pencil mark i love the pencil marks it's something that i really appreciate when i see a watercolors and i see the pencil marks i don't know there's a certain feeling that i feel because it's like everything was made by hand and i have a thing you know i'm also a crafter um and i have a thing for that i have a thing for that what structure behind of what you created is really cool some people don't like it so you can definitely after it's dry you can definitely erase it and say hey it looks like a copy or i don't know whatever it suits you all right so this is the demo for today i'm going to sign my baby because i think it's important all right right here with the date all right and you can do the same thing every time you create it's good that you add the date at least a, at least a year because you know it's sort of like these paintings are like um without going too much into detail and too technical about it it's about also your practice what state or level were you at such and such that time you're kind of just recording the level of how you were in time I have my very ugly foglies who I keep from the 1900s when I started painting and there's a big big huge amazing different I, I even have my first freaking sketchbook I don't have it around I don't have it with me right now but so you can see the improvement the amount of improvement of the years and the hours spent once you I don't know collected enough and you have practiced enough and it's a very cool way actually it keeps you humble so it means that you know you didn't you were not you were not born a genius okay and then it's something that you can learn this is also a skill so if you do exactly what i say or the way i did you can definitely learn it yourself doesn't matter the time doesn't matter how old you are and it doesn't matter how many years of experience you have you can do this if you're a novice or you can do this if you're just starting off or even intermediate. If you're an advanced student and you're watching me, I want to thank you because you can also incorporate it in your own paintings and you can learn something from somebody else. Of course, I feel like um, in this journey of ours, we're always learning. OK, so we're going to cut down the video for now, the broadcast going to come back and see what's next on our watercolor studio here in good old jersey take good care share with people okay share it share it share it learn from it and if you have any questions you're more than welcome to dm me through twitter see you then bye bye see you soon see ya love ya bye take good care bye bye